The United States Institute of Peace is an organization which was established in 1984, then with a Democratic Congress and a Republican president. So it's an organization established by law as a bipartisan measure, two parties agreed, to be an independent, nonpartisan, which meant non-Republican, non-Democratic, national institution to make a contribution to the resolution of international conflict. And so USIP, the Institute, has been with us now for some 29 years. And it's an organization which is not well known uh, worldwide. It's also not no known very well in the United States. Many people don't know about USIP and the fact that there is a organization established by the Congress to have this goal, the, the contribution to the resolution of international conflict. The word I used was to make a contribution to the resolution of international conflict rather than to do so because the parties to any conflict themselves must make a decision that they want to end conflict. Now, how can the Institute, which is a relatively small organization, it was very small in the first two decades of its existence, and today it's no more than a total of 200 staff total with a budget of $40 million total, which is a margin of error in the U.S. budget. It's a very small amount of money. And so what can you do with that amount of money? Well, you can actually do a lot of very important things. First of all, the Institute, by its mandate, has to provide one quarter of its budget in grants to organizations worldwide that engage in conflict resolution. So that's 10 million of its $40 million budget can go to organizations in Vietnam, Jerusalem, China, the Balkans, the Caucasus, Central Asia, Africa, to do any number of things to serve as monitors in conflict situation, situations, to produce um, movies or video on inter-ethnic dialogue, to do research on conflict issues, any number of things which might seem reasonable. The Institute also deals with the various stages of conflict to try to prevent conflict by providing information, to establish dialogue, to try to deal with conflicts that exist, and to try to help people in post-conflict situations. And it also has been involved in rule of law, security sector dialogues, demobilization, police role in post-stability operations, because unless you have a law, authority, police, judges, prisons, you can't have law and law enforcement. And so the Institute has been involved in all of these issues. It's also involved in training and education. For example, I'm currently here in Madrid at uh, a program of, the, of Helsinki España yeah. to help provide training in how to negotiate in conflict situations. This is only a small part, but it's part of the whole range of training provided by Helsinki España in their REACT program. Well, today, I'm here to provide uh, training in effective negotiation to a group from Helsinki España's REACT program. What's involved? To be effective as a negotiator, you have to be good as an analyst to understand the nature of conflict and the issues in conflict and the nature of the parties involved. You have to be an effective communicator. You have to know how to use communication skills, both verbal and nonverbal. You have to be able to 
use the process of negotiation and to understand what's involved in negotiation, how to prepare, how to conduct yourself, how to reach agreements, how to ensure that parties do what they're going to do. To do. All of this is part of the negotiation process, and anyone who's going to work in the international world has to be affected, uh, effective at them. And I do this through a range of vehicles, mediums, through not only presentation, which is boring, but through video, through exercises, through self-assessment, through small group work, through discussion, to enable people to practice and apply the sorts of things that we're all talking about. And of course, to draw on the experience of the people in the group, many of whom already have considerable expertise from having worked in conflict areas.